Having seen the examples on interface constructs with the arbiter and the different ways of interpreting an interface, now we will look at another important feature in the system Verilog that is mod ports. So, you may look at a situation where you have a module that is written in Verilog and that has been defined with the port declarations but not with an interface. But it so happens that the device uh, design is revised and you have an interface and now you need to connect the old module which is written in Verilog with port declaration through the interface. In such a case, mod ports or in short module ports are going to be helpful. So, this is one of the important feature and we will see how this is going to be used in our system Verilog. So, if you look at this particular example, uh, you have the top design where you have an interface which was used in arbiter design that is arb underscore if arbif which is with the clock. But you have a module declaration or what you see here is the instantiation where the ports have been defined. So, you can see that this is the arbiter module with the port, but the top is using the interface. In such a case, you can go on using that particular Verilog module with the port declaration, but you need to have the named instances or named uh, uh, port list, okay, and they have to be linked to the interface. Say for example, as you see here, the grant port is actually connected to the interface grant by uh, linking it to rbif.grant. So, this is the named connection and of course, you can have the test um, in a, a module instance which has been declared with the interface. So, then it connects this module top module connects the interface and a older version of module which has been written with the port declaration and not the interface can connect to a test bench which is going to be written referring to an interface. So, this is possible in case of system Verilog and uh, that is with the by mentioning the interface and the test bench with the interface links and then you can declare the Verilog module with the port declaration. So, this particular feature is going to be called as mod ports, okay, and uh, this is a feature within the interface and it provides a very practical and a straightforward way to simplify connections between the modules. Now, when I say between the modules, you should look at a case where you have several modules where the input to one of the module is going to serve as an output of another module. Say you have module M1 and M2. So, the output of module M1 is going to serve as a module 2 as an input. In such a case, here is an example of such a case. Uh, you can have an interrupt request signal which is on the slave of a bus and that is that can be an output from the slave, but it is going to be the input on the same bus for a processor. So, this is another scenario. In our case, the module M1 is a slave and module M2 is going to be processor. So, in such cases, we have to define the direction of the port okay, without even referring to the interface and the module. And in such cases, we will look at the mod ports declaration and you can see how that is going to be written in case of uh, system Verilog. It uses the keyword mod port. Okay, and it provides the point to point connection scheme with no signal direction in the interface. This should be something uh, you all have to note 
an interface lists the signals with the type and with the size okay but it doesn't specify what is the signal direction like in or out or in out or something in such cases mod port is going to be of big help so original modules using ports okay had this information because we explicitly say input and output in case of module declaration in system verilog as i said the interface provides this uh, mod port okay to define different views of the interface okay that are there in the interface signal okay that each module sees on its interface interface port the mod port construct is going to be in the interface and it allows to group the signals and specify the directions and it actually describes the module ports that are represented by the interface and you can have that means uh, an interface can have any number of mod port definitions okay as many as the modules okay and each one will be describing how one or more or other modules view the signals within the interface and the mod port defines the port direction that the module sees for the signals in the interface signals so we will see how this mod port is going to be used in interface to connect different modules okay so you can actually uh, specify uh, the mod port in system verilog in two ways one is it can be used in the module instance okay as part of the interface connection or it can be used in the module port declaration of the module itself so both of these styles are going to be synthesizable with whichever the compiler that you use and it is also once it is synthesized you can simulate and see the results and another thing that you have to notice is that in an interface the mod port is going to be defined and specified as the module port list but it is never given a signal name for example using a mod port signal or if which is an inter interface and you are using that signal from the test module and that uh, the signal name is grant so this way of using it is not permitted with the mod port in system verilog so here is an example where you are using uh, the same arbiter module module but uh, we are defining the top one and here we need to specify uh, the module and the test bench and also the interface but with this time you can see that the definitions have been changed okay and uh, you what you are going to see is that i am changing now on the subscription uh, what you can say a special extension has been added as we did with the port and the interface we now say for module mod port we use this extension mp so you can see here as i said there are two ways to use the mod port names in your design one is with respect to the design and the other one with respect to the test because in this particular instance we are using two modules that is one is test bench and the other one is design we are using the module ports with two different instance of the module and uh, you can actually define it when the module is instantiated as it is in this case okay and both of them are going to provide lot of flexibility when you are instantiating module more than one but each one of the uh, interface is referring to another module or a different module and a different subset of interface signal so this is how i can use the mod port declaration as you can see it is with the interface and the module interface and the module 
and we have this interface defined with the clock here and the same has been used and it refers to both the design as well as the test. Now you can use the same mod port in a bus design okay? and not every signal needs to go to every mod port. Okay? So you can have a selected set of signals. So here is an example where in a CPU, okay, the bus that links the CPU and the memory is modeled with an interface as usual what we do in our system Verilog uh, verification uh, this thing setup. And the CPU is bus master and it drives a subset of signals in the, thing, uh, in the sense that these signals are going to be the output of the CPU, okay. Say for example, request, command and address. Whereas the memory is a slave and it receives these signals and drives ready. So that means it receives these signals, okay, and then asserts the ready, okay, whether 1 as or as 0, okay. Now the thing is that there is one more set of signal that is data and both of them are driving that particular signal or set of signals. So that means as you see the CPU as a master has a set of driving signals, memory has a different set of uh, driving signals, but the common uh, set of signal which is data is going to be uh, driven by both master and slave that is processor and the memory. So the bus arbiter here which is going to be connecting or coordinating the transactions on the bus linking the memory and the CPU, it is actually looking at the request and grant okay, and it ignores all other signals. So now here we need to define three different mod ports, one for the master and one for the slave and one is the arbiter which actually connects the master and the slave and you can have an optional monitor mod port just to observe whether the transactions are happening in the right way or not and then you need to uh, update that in the scoreboard in the verification environment. So this is another example where you can use mod ports to connect two different module instances with an another module instance of course with an interface. So here is a complete set of examples which use the mod ports okay and as you see uh, I told you in the beginning the mod port is the keyword that de defines the mod port for a, for a particular module and as you see this is the interface that has been defined and in this interface definition I have to add the mod port one for the test and one for the design and notice here the direction has been specified but the same has is not very sp much specific in the interface. It, you can see only the clock is defined as input, rest of them the directions has not been in, I mean included in the definition. But here in this case the test and the design will have the request becomes output in the test and the input in the design and uh, reset and clock are going to be the global signals. Similarly the grant becomes input for the test and it becomes output for the design. And as I said, I can add an another monitor mod port which is going to observe all of this signals, request, grant, reset and clock and it actually conveys something to the scoreboard when the run is going to happen okay, on these designs. So as you see, this is one example with respect to uh, the frequently discussed arbiter design where I had only the design and the test bench and the top and the interface and with the interface I have defined the mod port and here is a case of the bus 
which I uh, just discussed, the bus that is going to connect the CPU and the memory. And here also the interface is going to be through the uh, arbiter. And as you see, that interface for this chip bus is using all of these signals. Very clearly you can notice that the except the clock and the reset, uh, the rest of them are not specified with the direction. In such a case, for the master and the slave, where these signals change directions, I have to define it with the help of a mod port. As you see, the interrupt here in the master is an output here and uh, the input address in the master becomes output address here and the grant is output in master and input in the slave and your data is going to be in and out as I said it is the common signal and as usual I have the global clock and the reset. Reset n actually signifies uh, active low reset and you need to uh, assert the different signals with respect to reset on the negative edge. So as you see uh, in the arbiter, you are using the module arbiter with MP and you are using the port list that are with the interface and that is one that has been defined for the DOT. Similarly, the module which is the test bench and it is using the mod port has been defined with the same interface but instantiated with respect to the test bench. So this is how I can use them in a module definition with the mod port. So and another thing there is something that you should notice as I said the interface does not specify the direction even there is an another thing very important thing in the mod port declaration that the input and outputs that have been specified will not specify the size and the size for the size you again have to look into the interface definition. Okay, so that is one thing and another thing uh, the information defined as part of the signal data type declaration in the interface. This is part is defined in the interface and mod part can be selected in either the module instance or the module definition but never in both of them. So you should instantiate either in the module instance or in the module definition but not both. <coughs> now here is another example of uh, using the interface as a monitor. Monitor is a case where uh, you will be looking at say for example, you have a design and you have uh, an output that is being observed and this is going to be essentially a monitor and the monitor has a set of outputs that have been already stored okay, for specific input cases. And the same input cases are applied here for the DUT and you compare those responses with the stored output responses and if all of them are matching or one by one on the run if they are same then the scoreboard is going to be updated. That is that particular case of input is uh, pass or it fails. Okay. So in that case I need to build this monitor but the monitor should refer to the set of signals that are appearing in the module and which are in the test bench as well. So in such a case I have to go for again the mod port declaration and the mod port declaration in the monitor will help me very clearly in asserting whether the result is going to be correct or not correct. Okay. So I can now display the messages okay, so that the case whatever the input case that we have we are verifying whether it is asserted or not 
with the time stamp from the simulator. So, as you see I write this monitor module and I use the same interface which has been written for the arbiter, but the thing is that you are using instance of the interface that is for the monitor, not for the design or the test bench. The one that is written for monitor mod port, you are using that and based on that and based on the request, you are displaying the messages whether the request is asserted or grant is asserted. I mean, when the request comes, you will assert the request. When the grant is provided, then you will assert the grant. And you can also uh, extend this particular design, okay, so that when the first request is uh, asserted and the first grant is asserted, you can put separate messages. And the next request and the next grant, you can augment the number and then uh, set it as asserted and display that message with the timestamp and the timestamp with respect to the simulator. Okay. So, this is another way of putting it across with the interface for a different purpose altogether, not for design or the test bench, but to monitor. This is in case of verification environment. Now, we will look at what are the different advantages. So, after looking at the definition of the interface and after looking at different ways how an interface is uh, used in our system Verilog verification environment with the test bench or the design or the monitor or the scoreboard, whatever the case. Okay. We now have to look at what are the advantages of the interface and what are going to be the disadvantages. It is a very detailed one. Uh, so, what you can see as an advantage is that uh, it is a mantra of our digital design that the design should be reused okay, as many times as possible. So, that the when you think of the next version of the design, you are not going to spend too much of time on the design. So, in the such a case, interface is going to be very helpful and it is going to be ideal for design reuse. Okay. And any number of times if the signal set is repeated, you can make use of the interface. And another thing is that the interface takes the jumble of the signals okay, that you need to declare over and over and in every module and program and put it in one central location accessible to all the modules and it actually reduces the possibility of the misconnecting signals. This is the biggest advantage okay, and uh, it is not going to be something mind bo bothering thing to declare the signals if the number of signals are too many. And when you add a new signal, it is very easy to do it with the interface, but not in the higher level and it again helps us to reduce the errors. And another very important uh, feature which is associated with the interface is that the mod port is going to allow us, allow us to connect different modules either in the earlier version or in the current version of system Verilog or Verilog version of it. And you can easily tap a subset of signals through the interface. Okay. And you can use that particular interface without further checking. And what are the disadvantages given this set of advantages which are most suited or what you can say everyone is going to appreciate these advantages when they are dealing with large and complex designs. Whereas the disadvantages of the interfaces are that, see look at the case when you are using it in the large design it is going to be helpful, but when you are using it for the point to point connections, okay. the interfaces with mod ports are almost like verbose as using the ports with the list of signals. And in this case interfaces have the advantage that all the declarations are still in 
one central location, reducing the ch chance of making an error. Remember that you have to declare them again in point to point connections. And also the interface name in addition to the single name, a signal name has to be used and so that now it happens that for modules, okay, which are more verbose but more uh, readable for debugging. So this is not going to be something helpful. And uh, if you are connecting two design blocks with a unique protocol that will not be reused, interfaces may be something like more work than just writing together with the ports. So this is one scenario where if you do not have the reuse of the protocol design, then you should be done with the port listing but not with the interface and it is not suggested to go for an interface. And also uh, when it of course interface can connect to different ports, different modules and uh, etc. But the thing is that when it comes to connecting two different interfaces, it is very difficult. So you need to look at every interface that is being connect, connected to the set of the common set of signals with the existing one and add new signals in the new one and you may have to break some of the break out the individual signals and drive them appropriately that means outside the interface. So these are the disadvantages of using uh, the interface but the thing is that always advantages outweigh the disadvantages and hence suggested for I mean uh, for uh, verification of uh, complex and large modules or design blocks in system Verilog. Okay. This a uh, part topic I mentioned uh, earlier in the one of the uh, session that is how to use uh, the signals, how to declare them, whether it is more appropriate to declare them as logic or as wire uh, and I mentioned that it is suggested to go for the logic declaration in verification in environment and that is going to be helpful. So the thing is that why we need to look at this particular thing is that the difference is ease of use that is for logic and whether I use it in the uh, different designs. So if your test bench is driving an asynchronous signals with a procedural assignment, the signal must be of logic type. And uh, wire can be used only in a continuous assignment statement and signals in clocking block are always asynchronous and can be declared okay, as interface signals. And another region, uh, reason why we you should use logic for interface signal is that the compiler will give an error if unintentionally use the multiple structural drivers. Okay. And so here is the case where in an interface the signal N is declared as uh, logic and W is declared as the wire. And as you see here, you are using it appropriately to drive the signals. As you see, the local wire has been declared here along with the interface and you actually take the local wire. Uh, values to ifc.w and you can assert those values as 0 and 1 and uh, drive the different signals. So this is how the logic and wire uh, declarations in an interface is going to be used. So if you are in verification better to use as logic but that is more appropriate in case uh, if you are not using continuous assignment state. 